Hey, welcome back. We have a new knife that I've, uh, I shouldn't say it's a new knife, but it's a knife that I have not featured on the channel yet. Where am I? There we go. Um, and uh, it's made by Walter Wells at Wells Blade Works. I'm very excited to check this out. This is my first from him. A friend, Justin, had uh, posted about his, um, about his uh, knives and they looked really cool. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. I dug in further and the price was just like remarkable. These are 100% made in the USA. Looks like we got a nice little packing job here too, by the way. 100% made in the USA. Let's see if I can get any info here without sharing my personal info. Yeah, it looks like it here. Kind of comes with this uh, COA here. And uh, yeah, this is a, it was really cool looking, but these are all apparently made out of Virginia and the price was just crazy. I think his knives range generally from like 375 to 475, um, which for, as you're about to see, a full custom made in USA with decent size to it is just a really good price. And yeah, first impression is, uh, this is freaking impressive. Wow, beautiful. Now there is a big drawback um, that you're gonna see as we get into this, but wow, that is a really good first impression. The weight is remarkable. It does not weigh much, wow. But apparently they do have like pretty bad lots, lock stick. And I'll say that like immediately I can see it has very light lockup, so that's interesting. This lock bar is just a little cheap. If you put a little more effort into making this lock bar really good, wow, but look at that. Perfect. I gotta say, I'm not, not mad about the lock stick though. It's not like terrible or anything. It, it's definitely there. But apparently the thing he's saying is it'll work in over time. Damn, this is freaking cool. Aside from the lock stick. This is a sweet knife. I can't believe these aren't like super popular given the price. I'm surprised everyone's not talking about these. I think it's really just this lock stick thing. So you can really hear that there. And I don't know if that's just a matter of like if he carbonized or what, but interesting, he's using a flat, if I'm seeing that right, let's zoom in there. It looks like, oh no, it does have a round top on it. I was gonna say it looked like he had a flat detent ball, but it was just the way the light was hitting it. Get this hair out of here. That came custom installed here on the blade. Um, interesting. You know, aside from that, wow, look at this thing. It's beautiful. Nice little deep carry pocket clip on there. Looks like maybe, um, it's hard to say if that's uh, a name brand or not. And then I like this dark washed, looks like a kind of an acid wash finish or something on the blade. The hardware is super minimal. There's some side to side blade play there. So maybe I'll try and uh, work on that. See if maybe if I tighten things up a little bit, that'll change. But that is really nice. So look, I think like you look at something like this and it has some drawbacks, but it has some really nice positives to it. Um, where you cannot get a knife like that for that price. Um, this one was uh, 475. So it's the very top end, you know, it's using marbled carbon fiber and stuff, but it'll make something like this in G10 or in micarta for like 375 it feels like it's on bearings let's double check are those washers that'd be really impressive if it's that good of an action on washers i'm still trying to get this hair out of here wow i think it's washers no uh no forward to back blade play, so that's good. Let's see how the edge is on it. Well sharpened. And man, it's just like perfectly centered. 
So some really nice positives on this knife, certainly some negatives, but you know, the detent's not super strong. So I probably would go, I mean, it's nice because you can walk it out really nicely, but eh, yeah, you just gotta put a little pressure on it and then you can kind of get it out of there, but that's probably not its biggest strong suit as the thumb flick. The reverse flick works fine because you can get so much momentum on a reverse flick, but the thumb flick's a little funny. You really gotta push forward in order to get the momentum you need. But man, the walkout's just like perfect. Like it almost feels like there's no detent. Nah, there's a little break there, but if you put any pressure into it whatsoever, it's pretty good. Not looking at any chamfering on the thumb hole, so that's maybe not for everyone. Definitely feel that a little now that I've rolled it out a few times. But man, that's pretty compelling for $475 MSRP there, right? There's not something like that available right now. I mean, man, if you put a little technology into his lock bar, maybe chamfered it a little bit more. Like it's definitely got a little bit of chamfering on it or something or sanded, but if he went with like a little thicker lock bar, carbonized it or something like that so it wouldn't have the click getting some good light in here now it's a bellingham washington for you this time of year you're not gonna get a lot of sun so let's take advantage of that for a minute while we do have it that's sweet That's just a really compelling design, too. He's got good eye for design. I've seen a couple of others that were even cooler looking than this one, probably. This one's really sweet, though. I have no issue with it. He does a bunch of different blade shapes. You got jimping up here on the blade. Um, for me, I would like the finger choil to be like a little... This is good for like a smaller hand, but for mine... Like, I kind of want this to be a little longer so that my two fingers can get in there. It's like kind of pick a lane. Do you want one finger choil up front? So it's not like the perfect handle design, but overall it's pretty neutral. So it's going to probably work for most folks. But it'd be nice if maybe he, like, carved that out and put in a forward choil there. Um, it certainly wouldn't look as good when it's closed. What's interesting is like, of all the detent methods, uh, of all the feeling, like this feels light detent, this feels perfect on the detent, this feels pretty light on the detent. The front flipper, I don't know why, because it looks like it's well above, I'm trying to see what's going on here. The front flipper is like really hard to actuate and I'm trying to figure out why, because Location wise, it looks like it's right in where it should be, but that's pretty hard to get it to go. It's not terrible. Most decent uh, fingers will make it work, but the jimping's pretty strong there and it definitely gets you a little bit. And it's just not sure why, but a little hard to activate that guy. So this could be designed maybe a little better somehow. Maybe take this a little further up so your finger doesn't flop off as much. But actually, if you get it in the right spot, I think the trick is to not go at the very tip. That's what it is. Okay. If you go up here, it's very hard. If you go right here, it's very easy. Interesting. Yeah, I can barely do it up there. Over here, it's no problem. Over here, I feel like I can maybe even... Yeah, do it with my finger. But if you're up here, it's very painful. Uh, let's not uh, bleed on camera today. The uh, detent break is pretty darn good. Yeah, pretty satisfying. And I don't see it flopping out of there when you slam it shut. There, you have to really work hard for it to slop, flop out of there. So naturally, it's going to work pretty darn well. 
Sorry, the lighting's a little funky here. Let me switch it up just for a second. That'll get us a little more consistency on the video. Oops, went a little too far there. All right, sorry, I had to pull the blinds into a spot where I'm gonna get a little more consistent lighting. Yeah, so I'd say like the one things, that like the couple things would be, I don't have perfect lock up there. Let me try and fix that real quickly while you're on. Um, I'm gonna, what size is that? Not a T15, I happen to have a T15 in here right now. It's like a T10 though. Looks like he has T8 hardware on most of it, except for the back here too, which is nice. Hmm. It's even a little loose feeling. Is it a T15? Yeah. yeah, it is a T10. Let's see if I can tell really quickly which side I should try and do this on, but looks like those are gonna rotate on me. Let's pull out my other guy here. My least favorite thing to do here, potentially scratch my knife. I need a better tool for this. Okay, I just gave it a very small adjustment. Now we're very close to strong lockup. It's not quite as drop shut as it was, but I'd take the, I personally take the stronger lockup very close. Let me give it one little last bit and see if that affects the action too negatively. Okay, fully locked up, but eh, still, still pretty good on the action. And if this is washers, I mean, that's going to work in. That's how I'd run it. Yeah, that's that's the right way to run this, in my opinion. Huh, still get a little tiny bit of blade play, but not a lot. No, nah, it's, it's pretty darn good. That's sweet. Uh, you know, again, you got to be willing to be okay with the lock stick, but it's not lock stick where you can't, like, unlock it. It's just a little... Frictiony. I've heard they break in over time. I don't know if that's true or not. But man, overall, I'm pretty happy with this guy. So thanks for going on this little journey with me. I'll probably be doing a follow-up video on this one. Um, overall, pretty compelling option there. So yeah, check out uh, Wells Blade Works. Um, Walter Wells, he's on Instagram. And uh, see what you think. Might be a, an interesting option for you. That's all for now. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.